The key thing to a smart city is not that you put all those elements into a city, but you actually integrate them. That you make them work together for the benefit of the business community and the citizens. And you cannot legislate for that. You have to just create the environment so they can work together. Um, I'll give you maybe just a couple of examples. If people like to work and live in secure cities. To do that, you do need, in many instances, a good CCTV system to make sure you can respond to problems. But you can also use the CCTV system to look at how many people are in a street, to start wondering whether you've actually got the right kind of transport involved. Garbage, nobody wants to talk about garbage, but it's a crucial part uh, of a city. And we discovered in one city that if you send the garbage trucks out at the wrong time, they clog up the city, and that really gives you a transport problem. So you do have to integrate. You do have to make sure the whole system works together. So let's look a little bit further at urbanization. It's not happening at the same rate all over the planet, but it is happening everywhere, even in the developed world. These figures show that even in Western Europe, more people are moving into cities. This is where the future is. And the number of cities is expanding, especially in, in Asia. There are going to be, I think, something like 137 cities of over a million inhabitants that don't even exist today in 2050. These are cities that at the moment are just greenfield sites. Southeast Asia, obviously, is, is, is happening very fast. In China, that's the only way forward. So if we break it down by region, I think that the thing that I'm, I'm like you to look at is Africa and Asia, you're seeing the biggest leaps. In terms of uh, the period from 20, 2000 to 2030, which is what this, this slide covers, the big jumps are going to be in Africa and Asia. Urbanization needs to happen because it's the only way forward for economies to develop. So let's talk a little bit more about the Internet of Things. Technology will continue to give benefits to, to everybody on the planet. The Internet of Things um, is interesting because a lot of it will be predicated on smartphones. Now, smartphones as they, uh, as they exist today are really just the precursors. You're going to see a lot more functionality in smartphones. Because of Moore's law, they will get much more intelligent. You will get a lot more power. Uh, we're going to see smartphones that don't need to be recharged, uh, I hope, every day. So we'll get a lot more longevity. Um, but it will give each individual a lot more power because it's got a lot more uh, intelligence. And quite honestly, this will be the only thing, or its, uh, or it's uh, grandson will be the only thing you leave the home with. You will use this phone, or it, it's, uh, its grandson, to unlock your car, to lock your house. As you walk out of the door, you won't set your alarm system. The house will sense that you are the last person to leave the house. The alarm system will set itself. The, uh, your heating or your air conditioning will turn itself down. It will know when you're coming back in the evening because it will look at your diary and uh, switch itself on 20 minutes before. Now, the reason I'm saying all this refers to the first slide. I know this will happen because the technology to do all this is already there. It's just a matter of implementing it. So we have a pretty good idea of what is going to happen in the future. What we've got to work out is how that affects us, how that affects our society. So moving on to cities. You've got intelligent digital signage. Now, this sounds like a big mouthful, but you're going to see a lot more of this. Why? Because I'm seeing it already in Western Europe. If you take, as an example, um, bus stops and tram stops in Amsterdam, and I'll talk a little bit more about Amsterdam later, um, they're not actually even owned by the city anymore. They were sold to a French company. And in, re in, uh, in, in return, the French company said, fine, we'll maintain them, but we have the rights now to the digital signage uh, at those uh, shelters. And they put up all kinds of stuff. And what we're now doing in Vodafone is we're dealing with both the, the city and with the, uh, with the signage company, with the uh, shelter company. And we're installing small, what are called Pico cells. And they allow people to get better coverage for their phones locally, because they act like small, uh, small radio masts for the, for the phone network. But we can also uh, allow the company to send down new signage. So we can inform peop people about changes to the uh, transportation system, problems with the buses, problems with the trams, very up-to-date information about when the next tram arrives, but also advertising information. But it gets even better than that. You'll be able to hold your phone up 
to one of these digital signs and download all kinds of information onto the phone, such as vouchers if you want to go buy something. Uh, if you've been told about a shop around the corner, you want to go and buy a new pair of boots, download a voucher, you've got 10 minutes, go do it, get the next tram. Now, that sounds pretty banal, but it really adds to people's uh, uh, ability to use the city, use the infrastructure, and it makes the city a lot more attractive to business. Energy saving and solar power, we're seeing many of these uh, tram stops actually solar powered. <coughs> Vocation-based services is something you're gonna hear a lot about as well. That means that people who opt into the system will know what's around them, what services they have available to them. The system will be able to inform them uh, if their schedule is possible because the bus has been delayed. You will get updates immediately on your device. You also know if your friends are nearby. You can do this already with a lot of apps, but it's going to get a lot more powerful. If you know that you're meeting somebody at 6 o'clock and they're running late, it will tell you automatically. Your phone won't have to text you or whatever. It'll tell you about your options. It knows about your preferences. The city is a landscape. It's a dynamic landscape. If you'll just talk into your phone and say you need a drink, well, you know, it knows the kind of bar you like. It'll show you where the bars that correspond to your preferences that are local are, and also where your friends are, so you might be able to, to meet up with them. 